Hi, so today we're going to be going over a board that doesn't turn on. So this is an A1502 MacBook Pro Retina board. And let's get started and get an idea what's going on with it. So this was already ultrasonically cleaned by my coworker. Unfortunately, there was no note left of where the liquid was. I actually haven't been telling them to do that, so that is totally my fault here. I didn't tell them to tell me where it is the liquid got in the board. So that makes it a little bit more difficult because... Now I got to see where the damage originally was. So one of the things I like to do is I like to know where the damage originally was because it'll give me a hint. Even if the component is not in that area that I need to replace, what happens is when I know where the damage originally was, at least I can get an idea of where upstream something bad might have happened. So, you know, let's say there's damage on one logic gate, but the logic gate is good. Maybe the signal coming into the logic gate, maybe the component that uh, is responsible for that may be bad. Maybe a resistor upstream on the other side of the board may be bad. You never know, but when you know where the damage originally started, you have a general idea of where to look. And all of this is really narrowing down in a very, very short period of time where it is that I have to look to figure out a problem. Because... We don't have the time to test every single thing in this in this machine. That's that's one thing that I want to get through to a lot of you. Um, you know, there are a lot of boards that are actually fixable, but they don't get fixed by us or by other companies because it's simply not worth our time to spend the entire day screwing with it to find a fault. We're not going to spend eight hours on a single board. Just that that's just what it is. You know, you got to look at what well, this is. This is not. Um, you know, this is not. Uh, uh, some, you know an antique. It's not something that's in a museum. It's a basic basic product. Nothing special. And it's worth a certain amount of money. And time is worth a certain amount of money. So let's see first what power arrows are present and which ones aren't to get a little basic idea of what's going on. So I get a green light in the charger, which means that the one wire circuit works. And the fan is spinning. So it's actually turning on, which means that it works, which means that there's a good chance that I actually don't have to do a logic board repair today. So let's see if it turns on when I plug in the stuff in the machine. This is pretty cool. <laughs> you don't understand. Like, let me see if I can show you. I have to hide the names, obviously. So but keep in mind, I took about four or five days off to do this class. And this is what I come back to. Like this. This is what I fucking come back to. So um, this is pretty cool because I'm, I'm going to be getting something uh, out of this status without actually having to fix it. So let me tell you what most likely happened here. And this is this, the re only reason I'm going to be uploading this video is because it happens to me all the fucking time and is really something that you should be aware of if you're working on these machines and dealing with liquid damage. So you can dry them, you can ultrasonically clean it, you can put the alcohol in it, and you can dry it off. And it won't work, but it'll work a day later. And the reason for that is there's still some liquid that's hiding somewhere, and that stupid little liquid is making something, you know, the one kilo ohm, and it should be 10 kilo ohms because it's, it's touching points that it's not supposed to. And what winds up happening is because of that, whatever it is, it causes the board to not work. So this is, it's really important to dry these things all the way. So what I'm guessing happened here is that this board got, uh, got ultrasonic. After the ultrasonic, it got put in the, in, the, in the alcohol bath. Then it got put in the air filter for an hour to dry off. After the hour in the air filter, it looked really dry, but somebody tried to turn it on. They noticed it didn't turn on. And then in the amount of time that it was sitting on my desk, right by my air conditioning vent, which is blowing air on it, uh, which is you know low humidity air, obviously, since it's coming from an air conditioner, it decided to dry. And now it works. So... Now, I get to look like a genius who fixed a retina board in five minutes when I, when I hand it back to them, when in reality, all I've done is I've literally, I've done nothing but sit here and put this shit back together. So again, the reason I'm uploading this is my staff is very experienced. They're good at what they do, and it happened to them, which means it's probably going to happen to you. You know, this, this is kind of like a, this is a real world channel. I'm not posting this stuff so I could look like the biggest fucking genius that knows everything. I'm posting it so that you can learn and avoid all of the mistakes and the stupid crap that, that I managed to do. So I'm going to plug this thing in. It's going to turn on. 
I put the SSD in there and I plug the screen in so that you'll be able to see it booting into an operating system. As you can see, it is booting <laughs> into an operating system, which means that th this works just fine. There is absolutely no logic board repair needed uh, besides the ultrasonic cleaner. Now, some of you may ask, uh, how do you build or cleaning versus other things? I strongly believe in the solutions method of billing, meaning that you have a problem. If I can solve this problem to this standard, is this price agreeable? And if they say yes, it doesn't matter if I'm cleaning your board. It doesn't matter if I'm soldering small components on your board. It doesn't matter if I'm pissing on your board, I'm charging you the, the rate. The, so this would be billed as logic board repair. This board was disgusting. And now it works. So really, like again, with the, how many times have I sat here, and I've done it on video, how many times have I honestly sat here for three hours and made a board better in a manner in which I cannot bill for it? I have. But like you can see in the Dar Lewis Chase's Darby's Rabbit Hole to Hell. That is not the first rabbit hole board I've worked on. That's not the first board that I spent three or four hours on that I couldn't get paid for. That's like the 300th or 400th board that I've spent hours on that I can't get paid for. And it, again, it just, it just uh, brings back really bad memories, just thinking about every single one of those, thinking about the times where I was leaving at one in the morning and I didn't go to the gym that day and I was a little dehydrated because I was just so stuck following this little problem and I was just sweating and my desk was a mess and I left with my desk a mess because I had no mental energy to put anything back where it went, no mental energy to even clean the flux off of my keyboard or my mouse or my hands before I just took a cab ride home. Uh, that, that, that's the flat rate system. So... If I fix your problem, I charge for fixing your problem. Your board was dead. We fixed your board. Whether my piss fixes your board, the ultrasonic fixes your board, or four hours of my time fixes your board, same rate. And yeah, this, this is just something to be careful of. So when you're done with what you're doing, when you're done with the cleaning process, it's really good to have one of these toaster ovens. Because again, I've done this. I've said, fuck, it doesn't work. And then I put it back in there for about a half hour, and it dries. So I put it in a toaster oven at about 250 Fahrenheit. I set this toaster oven here to Hamilton Beach that we got from Kmart. I set it to convection. I usually set it to just two hours because that's fairly safe. But um, I wind up pulling the thing out because of impatience. Not my impatience. It's actually mostly Sharky's impatience. He really doesn't like waiting. Do you, Sharky? Do you? I don't like waiting for the oven. Me either, Sharky. So, that's that.